EA at it again. So today I wanted to talk about a couple of new topics that have been coming up. So the first one we're going to talk about is this EA patent leak that pretty much leads to more microtransactions and people paying for more uh, as they lose or we'll, we'll get into it. So basically what this is is that you know adaptive difficulty which isn't a new thing because they use it in Insomniac Games use it in the Ratchet and Clank games. Ratchet and Clank games, uh, I think every Ratchet and Clank game after the first one, they have the adaptive difficulty. So if you die, if you keep dying, then they'll make the game easier and they'll cheat in your favor. Now, uh, I don't, I don't know how I feel about that because to me, it's like you gotta play the game at the set difficulty. Don't have the game cheat in your favor. But I can see why people would uh, would possibly quit because there's too much of a challenge, which I think is kind of pathetic. But <laughs> the only way I'd be okay with adapted difficulty, like 100%, is if you had the ability to turn it off. I don't think that's something that should be forced onto people. Now, EA is doing that same exact thing, except the more you buy microtransactions the harder they're going to make the game. And you see where I'm getting at. This is going to lead to people buying more microtransactions because the game is getting harder as they're buying more. So this is just another one of those cases of EA being just the scummiest pile of shit company that they are. This is why I'm so um, scared for Jedi Fallen Order because it looks great. It looks awesome. I'll get into another story uh, after this revolving around that game. There's no microtransactions, which, uh, again, it's sad that we have to be uh, <laughs> be excited for that. You know, hopefully we'll see gameplay E3, and hopefully they won't try anything, but we all know EA is going to try to do something. Man. It's just like this meme right here on the screen. <laughs> oh, man, I hate EA so much. This Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order writer got attacked for his belief that it's possible to make apolitical games. Uh, now, I won't cover too many political topics because I'm just... Like, if you ask me what my opinion on politics are, so I'm going to keep the topics about politics to a minimum, but I don't know if that's going to be possible considering the fact that this sort of attitude is one I want to see more from developers. I want to see them stand up to these weirdos. Stand up for their creativity. You know, you don't have to inject politics into absolutely everything. It gets draining. It's... Oh, my God. If you asked me what my thoughts on politics were, I would give you the same exact answer every single time. I don't give a single fuck about politics. Just don't force it. And now they're forcing it, so now I have to give a fuck. It's annoying. It's so, oh my god, it's so frustrating to see this news every single day. But shout out to this guy, Chris Avalon. This guy gives me hope in uh, Jedi Fallen Order. That and the other writer uh, for this game. He didn't like The Last Jedi, so we should be in good hands with this game. We should be, as long as the gay doesn't screw it up. Right? <laughs> um, THQ Nordic, they're revealing on Twitter three games for three days. Uh, the first game they announced yesterday, that was Spongebob Squarepants Battle for Bikini Bottom. For those who don't know what that game is, it's a 3D platformer. And it's, you know, Spongebob Squarepants 3D platformer. Uh, I played this game last year on the GameCube, and I didn't like it. It just felt too by the numbers. And it's weird because I love 3D platformers. That's one of my two favorite video game genres of all time. And I love SpongeBob SquarePants. I, a lot of people in my generation, you know, grew up with that. In my age range, grew up with that, that uh, that show. It's legendary. <laughs> people are still talking about it to this day. But if it's a remake, uh, I'd say check it out if you like 3D platformers. Uh, I'll, I'll maybe I'll try it again. I don't know. 
But they're announcing the second game June 6th at 2 p.m. Eastern and June 7th, 2 p.m. Eastern as well. So we'll see what those are. THQ known for making, you know, of course, the SpongeBob games, Disney licensed games. They also helped make the Sonic Advance games. Just found that out. That was pretty cool. <laughs> but uh, those games are awesome. But yeah, we'll see what happens. Lastly, we have everybody's favorite online service. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Switch Online. They revealed their new NES games coming to the Switch Online game service. <laughs> oh, man. The best part about this is the, the actual video where they reveal it because, as you can tell, the majority of people, they... <laughs> They love it. It's great. It's fantastic. So now you have all your classics, uh, City Connection, uh, Volleyball. I didn't even know Volleyball was on the NES. <laughs> double dra and Double Dragon 2. That's that's pretty cool. Uh, but the best part about these videos is the comments. So let me read a couple of them. The Wii had Super Nintendo and N64 games in 2006. How is it possible to be this incompetent? I don't know. I don't know. Sony has Sonic Mania and Borderlands the Handsome Collection this month for PS Plus users. Nintendo Volleyball for the NES. Yep. It's, it's like they're scraping the bottom of the barrel of NES games now. They have to know that we do not like this service by now. Come on. Like my NES, uh, not NES, my Nintendo Switch Online video is really late. I would have made one back in the day if I was doing rants like that. But, uh, just... <laughs> They have to do something, man. It's it's getting pathetic at this point. I miss the old days, virtual console, not having an online subscription. <sighs> I do too, man. I do too. Nobody. <laughs> Nintendo. Don't you want to play volleyball with the NES? Uh, no. No, I, I, I really don't. <laughs> the only thing I miss from the Wii, a real virtual console. Um... I, I miss uh, Miiverse. Miiverse would be awesome to have on the Switch. I fucking love Miiverse. Uh, that, oh my god, that was so cool. That was the be that was probably my favorite thing about the Wii U for me. That and with the 3DS, you had Street Pass. I feel like both of those things could be combined onto the Switch very easily. Because, you know, you take your Switch on the go, and then in Miiverse, you can log in, and chat, hey, it'd be a messaging system, it'd be a messaging system, right? So, sad that the Wii U had a messaging system, not the Switch. Anyways, anyways, <laughs> can't wait to play an accumulated five minutes of each of these. Yeah, I don't think there's a single person on my on my friends list that has over five hours on this, on this uh, NES games. <laughs> uh, oh, cool, a game, oh, wait, C's box, oh, cool, a game I've never heard of, C's game footage, oh. SNES games launch date February 30. <laughs> E3 better give us Earthbound games and Super Nintendo Library. Hell yes. Me. Nintendo. I can't... <laughs> me. Nintendo. Please, I can't breathe. Pass me my asthma retainer. Nintendo. Volleyball. <laughs> oh, you're over here dying. Fans. Maybe some GameCube... City Connection! <laughs> City Connection! <laughs> OMG, yeah, pretty much this. OMG, I've been waiting for this, said no one ever. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. That's enough, <laughs> that's enough. And I hate, like, um, clowning Nintendo, but it's just like, Sony, I made the rant video about Sony, and then I made the rant video about Nintendo, and there's really nothing to talk about in terms of Sony. They're, like, gearing up for PS5 out in the shadows. So... And then Microsoft is like floating in space, so <laughs> well, <laughs> there's nothing else. So, of course, for now, until you know this weekend when they have all the conferences. So, I'm gonna do more videos like this covering multiple different topics. This is pretty fun. <laughs> so that's it for this video, and I'll see you guys next time. God, volleyball.